everyone. This is the Big Glasgow Comic Cast for February 27th, 2021. I am your host with the American Voice, Ian, and today I am joined by Massimo. Hey guys, uh, I am a volunteer writer for the site, uh, and I am... And uh, also Alan, the man who hates everything. Hi, how are you? And uh, much. this is the number one comic book podcast that is recorded on Sundays at 6 p.m. with two Scotsmen and one American, allegedly out of Scotland. That's enough qualifiers that we should officially be number one. Oh, 100%. You covered it. <laughs> so what we want to do today, we, we have a couple of things lined up. Um, the first thing is um, we're, we're going to kind of go over some things we've been looking at, some things we've been reviewing for the site this week. Uh, maybe get into a little bit of this week's WandaVision because that's always a fun thing to talk about and we have to have something new for people to listen to. And uh, we also have a guest this week that we'll be talking to later uh, who recently got his Kickstarter funded for an indie comic that he is making. So that's very exciting. Um, so as, as far as reviews and comics and what we've been reading uh, this week, I, I actually want to go ahead and uh, start with Alan, because he always has such an interesting perspective on things. Have you reviewed anything this week? What have you been reading? What's What's been on your radar, buddy? Uh, um, I went back in time and read Grand Abyss Hotel by Marcos Pryor and David Rubin. It's a really good book. Uh, timely as well. I mean, it came out in 2016 in Spanish. They released it in English last year. 2019, sorry. And it's never been more relevant uh all about horrible government decisions neoliberalism and an uprising of the people so i think everyone should read it pretty yeah. much and there will be a review coming up on the website very soon that um, is, is the start of the revolution that sounds yeah, shockingly relevant so you're gonna have a review coming up of of that book on the website what was the book's name it's a uh, grand abyss hotel grand abyss all right uh it's very good. Well, I look forward to... I say more than that, like, in the review. Like, it's more than just me going, that's quite good. You should probably read it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I hope so. But... That would be a that would be a very short review. Reviews, I've I've found, I don't know about you guys, I've found reviews can be shockingly difficult. Um, it, well, this is my first real attempt, and yeah. Yeah, uh, especially, um, especially depending on what you're reviewing. I mean, it, there's a big difference between reviewing, like, a single issue and reviewing, like... You know, a, a thick 200-page trade paperback. Like, my first review was uh, uh, Swamp Thing, The Root of All Evil. And that fucking book is, like, 280 pages long. I was, uh, yeah, I was a lot. Uh, it's, uh, I've done a, a few reviews so far as well, and I've, I've really struggled. And, I, and this is just me to, to, to give all the negatives sometimes. Because I feel like if someone sees it, like, I don't want to get... Like, I, like, some of the books I've reviewed so far like, have been phenomenal. Uh, but there's been one or two where the story hasn't been quite up to my liking and I've been ruining it and I don't know how I feel about going super negative with it. <laughs> like, I can't be Alan and completely shit all over at every single <laughs> major property in the last 20 years. <laughs> in my defence, in my defence, that was all Zack Snyder. Like, we were talking about <laughs> off-air kind of thing and, yeah, I'm not a fan. But I don't know, man. Book, you, you basically uh, said The Dark Knight Returns is overrated. I, I said I don't like it. Like, you know, it's different. <laughs> One just of, uh, one of the first books that I, I gave. Sorry, it was just because you were saying that. One of the first books that I gave out was uh, IDW Terminator versus uh, Transformers, and a guy called Robert reviewed it, and he slaughtered it. But obviously, when we put that in some media, we'll tag the writer, tag the artist, the colorist, etc. So I put it on Twitter. I didn't tag anybody. I just simply put it out there because obviously I didn't want to shy away from it, but I didn't want to tag them straight out. An hour after that, Alan basically retweeted it, but like tagged everybody. Oh no! <laughs> uh, Alan, you mischief so, maker. Chaotic man. Um, How, did, did we get know, any reactions really from it? Back. Well, like I noticed that um, IDW, because it's, we did advanced reviews, uh, I no longer had access to their server, and I'd emailed them a few weeks ago. And they were taking like an overly long time to come back to me with like a new password to get access to their advanced comics. And I was like, this cause like we, we crapped on that review that they maybe they just not oh, want no. us to do reviews anymore. But then it like 
silly o'clock in the morning, obviously, given because they're on American time, they'd emailed me like the new details. So it's we're getting we're, we're getting advanced reviews again. So obviously, if you didn't do so, we, we didn't we didn't uh, we didn't lose any friends. That's good. That's good. I'll have to read that review at some point. Um, we did upset uh, the guy from V for, v for Vendetta right now. <laughs> oh my god, he was David, he David was real upset about that. I um. To be fair, you know, he was fifty percent of the book, like. You know, I made. I made. He's, he's sure. I mean, I made the point as well, though. Like, <laughs> oh, sure. Like as mentioned in the review, like I'm pretty sure that, uh, like whoever, whoever, I think whoever said it in the chat, didn't erase him from history, right? And like yeah, exactly. And I was, I was like, you come. I, I mean, the art. Uh, I think uh, Ian, you might have said that the art isn't amazing, but the story is phenomenal. It, and I, I can agree with that. And I thought if you come for that story, and it, maybe the artist isn't specifically mentioned, but it is mentioned in the review, of course. Cause it's, of course, credit to the artist. It's it's I no say, it's no Watchmen. No, few things are though, right? But in my defence, I loved this book and couldn't say enough nice things about it. There's a, another book that we're going to be talking about in a little while, and I can't say enough nice things about that either. So I'm I'm not all misery and doom. It's just I'm not a big fan of Zack Snyder. No, I, I actually the the impression I've gotten from talking to you about what you what you do like and what you don't like is you actually you trend more towards the more kind of uplifting and and silly parts of comics and not really the the stuff you don't like is is the the misery and and the dark and the grim and gritty for the most part it seems i have my moments on it like like again the the grand abyss hotel isn't exactly the most uplifting stuff uh the other book that we're going to talk about very soon the well, our guests book pretty much uh is not exactly sweetness and light all the way through. Like I don't think he would mind me saying, but it's you know it's really good stuff. Yeah, and, I, you know, I guess I'm, it depends how it's done. I mean, it's and vertical stuff. That's all. I mean. It's uh, yeah, Zack Snyder, and this is coming. I'm a Zack Snyder fanboy. Uh, we we've discussed this, but he he does tend to uh, disembodied voice from earlier on. He does tend to um, really lean into kind of the darker aspects in kind Never of a sort of religious kind of, iconography size of things yeah, yeah kind of uh a gritty just for the sake of gritty but i, I think he's a hell of a visual director yeah. and I, I enjoy watching his work so uh, uh, that's that looks phenomenal no question i say uh, it is like visually spectacular i mean what was the film he done sucker punch which yeah. i think that's his worst film Oh no, it's, it's terrible, but it looks amazing. Yeah. Like the trailer for it was like, oh my god, I need to see this film. And uh, nah, not so much. It's, Bye. It, it's, it's, it's video game, movies. the movie, well, pretty much. Yeah. Great soundtrack. Yeah, it totally really, is. Yeah. Really good soundtrack. That is. There's true. that disembodied voice again. Everyone else hears that, right? <laughs> cool. Well, now that we've um, definitely talked about things that aren't the Grand Abyss Hotel for a good. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Massimo, what yeah. what, have, what have you been reading, man? What have you been reviewing? Uh, so this week, I've had a, quite a few reviews on my plate. I decided to pick up a little bit more than I could chew, but I've done uh, well so far. Uh, but my, my kind of reviews that I put out this week have been uh, an Aftershock uh, comics book called The Man Who Effed Up Time, and also uh, Kieran Gillen's, uh, I can't say his, uh, Kieran or Kieran Gillen's uh, One Thing Future. Um, which I thought was phenomenal. Though. And uh, these, these reviews can be found on the site. Uh, and the review I was talking about that I said I kind of didn't want to be too harsh on was for The Man Who Left Up Time, because I think that that book from its first issue, which is really, really good, it's a really time-twisty tale uh, that kind of uh, mixes in some kind of murder mystery whodunit elements as well. But it just feels like it starts really strong. The first three issues are phenomenal, and it kind of just clops off. I think and I, and I just I felt really disappointed with it because I, I, I obviously uh, I, I put that in review I it said that it's still worth a read but it didn't felt like one of no no I didn't say flop <laughs> <laughs> no no connotations were shit here uh, but it was like it just kind of tailed off a little bit uh, towards the end like, it is a good book and it's like a kind of pick up five five ish mini series it's really good um, so yeah time travel can always be uh, a little bit of a boondoggle i mean it's it's something that uh the marvel movies made fun of pretty effectively uh in in endgame the the man that effed up time so it sounds like you had some kind of really mixed feelings on it what's what's the premise there i mean what's uh, what's the what's the inciting incident for the man that effed up time so this basically to to keep it kind of brief on spoilers and kind of light and stuff it is basically this guy his name's sean bennett 
was a lab assistant at a, a lab that is developing a time travel technology. Um, but like he isn't respected by his peers. And after kind of one bad day at work, he goes to a bar. And after some convincing from a friendly face, uh, he's like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in time. I'm gonna uh, change a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go get a lot of numbers. I'm gonna go send Rose to my girlfriend to make sure she doesn't break up with me." I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to go and uh, give out these research notes so that they can basically fix the, the machine properly, which is uh, kind of part of uh, the first issue where the, the professor actually doesn't have any idea where the notes came from. Uh, and he does all this, and he comes back, and he's royally, as the title suggests, fucked up time. Um, and it has some phenomenal art, uh, and the first three issues have a really strong premise. It's just the final two issues for me just really let it down. And I don't want to spoil too much, but there's loads of scenes with people with top hats, and pterodactyls and pyramids and also some time police involved and it is it's very entertaining but you had me at top hat some of it like <laughs> like it's honestly it's worth a read um and i say that in reviews i said uh, uh, that it's definitely worth a read but i feel like if you are expecting something with this kind of grand finale i wouldn't put your hopes too high so you'd say it's, it's 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 a good it's a good ride but it doesn't necessarily stick the landing it sounds like no yeah, okay. in my opinion anyway but you guys can completely go and read it yourselves and yeah you know it's um, uh what they used to say on uh, Reading Rainbow back in the day. Don't take our word for it. Uh, the other book I was reading, which one you feel, um, it's phenomenal. Uh, and I cannot stress this when I say phenomenal. Um, Is that the Kieran Gillen one yet? Yeah, it's f- amazing. It's uh, you can stress I'm, it a I'm, little uh, bit. Uh, uh, okay, so I really shout it down the microphone. Is that what you want? Yes. Uh, I'll show death metal on it. Go death metal, just hold my mic up to me. Uh, but yeah, that's a really, a really good book. I've reviewed the first two volumes for the website. Um, and both volumes have been stellar, phenomenal action. And to give a summary of that one, it is basically kind of take uh, like the all the Arthurian legends that you may or may not know vaguely and throw them at the window. Because um, this book is is incredible and it gives a modern twist to King Arthur and his Knights of Old Round Table and, and really just has this really like incredible idea of what story truly is. Uh, I don't so, want to spoil it. So it could be Zack Snyder's next film, is that what you're saying? It could, honestly, yes. Yes, I, 100%. Every, everything comes back to that guy. Jesus Every, Christ. Oh, don't give him difficult. ideas. <laughs> but yeah, um, that is an incredible book. And I would suggest that if you guys are hesitant about it, and I'm going to plug myself here, you can read the reviews for the first two volumes on our website. I will do that, and I will also read it because I do like Kieran Gillen. I just haven't read that one. So thank you, Massimo. Thank you for your suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, what have you Ian, what have you been listening to reading? That sounds like uh, that sounds like you have basically a, a, a so-so book and a really good book that you uh, that you reviewed. Um, on on my end of things, um, there were there's one book I've actually reviewed this week where there's actually a review up on the website, and then there's one I'm about half done with the review that is relevant to a couple of things. The book I actually did review is Wonder Woman: Dead Earth. Um, which I can't say, much like Massimo with Once and Future, I can't say enough good things about this book. Um, several months back, I, I had been saying, like, I, I want, I'd love to have a Wonder Woman book that hews more towards, like, the, the Greek myths and legends and less away from the superheroics, um, because I think she's a character that really fits in well with that sort of thing, obviously with, you know, her origins being kind of based in Greek gods and Greek mythology. And while Dead Earth doesn't necessarily kind of stray into Greek mythology, it's definitely got that tone to it. Um, Basically, the premise is Wonder Woman wakes up from some sort of um, kind of cryogenic coma uh, to find a Earth that is, as the title implies, dead. Um, It's very Mad Max. You know, everything is kind of a... Cease to be. Yeah, everything is kind of a wasteland. There's a, a small kind of tribe of surviving humans that have sort of a uh, a a dictator uh, kind of in charge of that society and um i don't i don't want to go too much into spoilers but i mean this is this is a wonder woman story you're not going to have batman pop up halfway through and save the day like bruce wayne is dead we see his skeleton he's he's there is no batman superman's dead everyone is dead it is wonder woman only um but the story is really good the art is phenomenal the art looks very much like a Almost like a children's book in the animation, except with a lot more gore. Um, because holy shit, does Wonder Woman eviscerate some monsters in this book? Like just guts, just guts, man. Um, and the one thing I really appreciate about the book is it's. I feel like Wonder Woman is a character where it's very easy to 
characterize her too much as kind of a bloodthirsty warrior um, or too much as kind of a naive. Like, I, I really don't like um, Jeff John's interpretation of Wonder Woman in the first New 52 Justice League book he did. I was not a fan of where she's like flipping her shit over ice cream cones. <laughs> um, I just thought that was a bit silly, personally. This Wonder Woman is both extremely empathetic and very human, while at the same time absolutely wrecking shop when she has to. And it's it's a really fantastic kind of balance between that more compassionate ambassador type of Wonder Woman and a Wonder Woman that will absolutely eviscerate a motherfucker if it comes down to it. And so I, I think I think the author slash artist, he handled double duty, um, Daniel Warren Johnson. I, I think he did a great job capturing the character and also kind of giving you a compelling Elseworlds tale uh, in the, the four issues that covers it to, to sort of sink your teeth into. Um, so four um, issues, I bought the first two. I've read the first one, but I've not read the rest. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed what I read. It's... You mentioned as well that it's from the Black Label as well? Yes. Of DC Comics, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's a Black Label book, and it's a Black Label book that actually kind of fulfills the promise of <clears throat> Black Label in that, I mean, it's not like there's... There's not like a bunch of nudity and bat penis and, it's you know, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, but it is a very violent book. Um, I wouldn't say it's adult, but yeah, it's, it's a bit more mature than what you'd find in, in your typical kind of monthly Wonder Woman title. I was going to say, I, I'd like the way, I mean, it sounds like a great read and I'm probably going to give it a shot because I, I missed out on some of the Black Label stuff because I was a bit iffy as to like how dark and brooding they were going to go with it. But the way you've described it so far, it seems right on my alley, because as described, I also hate the idea of Wonder Woman being this naive woman who knows nothing about the outside world. Right. Like, the woman's been around for a while, do you know what I mean? So she's, you know, she's going to know some, like, stuff, and, like, I feel like when authors and writers, uh, writers, I'm sorry, uh, illustrators kind of take a character who is as iconic as Wonder Woman and then kind of dumb her down a bit, I don't like it all. Right. I think she needs to be... I think the New 52 was like a, a new beginning for it, wasn't it? So it was like she just came to Man's World or whatever. I didn't read a lot of it. Brian Azzarello, is that that one? Cliff Chang. Oh my God, what was the one like post-crisis? Uh, this is terrible. Wolfman, Marv Wolfman and the amazing artist who draws like crowd scenes so well, like he does the Avengers, George Perez. Like, that one where she came to Man's World for the first time and she goes to Greece and she kind of becomes pally with a, a young girl. She's eating ice cream and that one and stuff like that. So it was maybe just a wee kind of nod back to that. But that I know be. what you mean. Like, she's, she's been alive for quite a while. And she's done some stuff. She's murdered lots of animals, probably. And... Yeah. Yeah, and you're right. The New I mean, 52, nice. that, that Justice League Origins volume, the first Justice League volume in the New 52, the, the conceit there is that it's... It's kind of everything is brand new and Wonder Woman's just kind of uh, found her way into man's world for the first time. So, I mean, that that is kind of a fair um, excuse for her being a little bit on the naive side. You've, the, the actual opposite end there, and it's like she's just like woke up on a, a dead planet and decided to murder the few remaining things that are left. And it's like, <laughs> you know, find the middle ground there, Diana. Come on. Just oh, yeah, there's, be easy. There's a really fantastic, my, maybe my favorite scene from the entire... Um, from the entire series is I think in the very first volume. So basically she, she meets these survivors and saves them from being just murderized by a monster in what turns out to be the bat cave of all places. Of course, um, just because Batman's dead doesn't mean, you know, we don't get some, some Batman stuff, sure. um, but they, they take her back to their, their tribe, their society and immediately they go full Judas on her and turn her into their um, their dictatorial leader. But it's because they need to bring back someone, I mean, basically as a, a slave or as a, a gladiator for these arena fights they have or else they don't get to eat this week. So it's a survival thing. And um, so they... Fair enough. Yeah. So, so they lock, you know, they lock Diana up in, in a jail cell and one of the people that she met that betrayed her comes and visits her. And she has this whole thing about how, you know, I love humanity. Like, even when you betray me, I still love you. And the 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 lady who, you know, betrayed her and, and, and gave her to this dictator is like, I, I don't see how you can live with it like that. Like, that's not human. And Diana just kind of goes, exactly. And it, it's it's this great scene that really kind of exemplifies how Wonder Woman, much like... Um, 
much like Superman kind of is supposed to be, is, is kind of this ideal to strive towards. She's supposed to be kind of an example of the best of us. I, uh, I think that's, that is my inter- favorite interpretation of, yeah. of uh, like just the idea of Superman being as a character where, as you said, they are the best and brightest of humanity. Yeah. Uh, which is why I hate when people say Superman is boring, in my opinion. S- it's one of the things I really absolutely despise. And I, I know people can say it all the time, but I think uh, for me, I just, I, you can be hopeful and you can be this light, but you also can be interesting. And I think, not to sidebar a little bit too much, but talking about stories where you have characters when they're shown at their best, uh, same with Wonder Woman Black Label, uh, All Star Superman is, I think, one of those ones, is that it shows the hero at his best, where he is at the light of humanity, as you said, but also at the same time has very human qualities. Absolutely. I mean, I think yeah. we can. All Star Superman is. So carry on, carry on. Oh, I was going to say, I, I think I was going to say probably what Alan was going to say. I think we can all agree that All Star Superman is pretty much a must read for not just Superman fans or DC comic fans, but really comic book. Uh, anyone who likes comic books should read that book. I think anyone who just likes storytelling, like in like an interesting way, like if that makes sense, like because it's just told phenomenally. Yeah. Like, 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 it's, it's Grant Morrison. If there's anyone that can, can, tell a goddamn story in a comic book it is that crazy bastard indeed um, which, 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 but i didn't want to sidetrack you too much from your review i just thought it was a kind of an interesting thing to compare those maybe oh no I, I think i i think i gushed about <laughs> uh dead earth about about all i can without getting too spoilery about it and especially if you guys uh, if alan's only read the first issue and you haven't read any of it i, I don't want to give anything away it has some really good moments it is i mean that book is um that book's metal, man. Like not to not to you know not to step on Scott Snyder's toes, but that book is more metal than anything in Dark Knight's metal. The other book that I'll have a review coming up for um, either today or tomorrow is is Vision by Tom King. So it's a good book. I, I won't say I won't say much about it. I will say that if you're watching WandaVision, you should read that book. There are definitely some things that they borrowed from it that um, especially are relevant in this week's episode. So. Um, I, do you guys want to just kind of go through beat by beat? Um, there will definitely be spoilers here at this point. So I, I, I guess really quick before we start uh, with WandaVision, our guest today uh, is David Crana, and he is the creator of Glass City, which is a dark and gritty uh, comic book that he's kickstarted uh, that we're going to talk about a little bit later, and we're we're pretty excited to have him on. He is a well, not to me because I, I live in the U.S. obviously, but to my uh, my Glasgow native uh, compatriots here, he's kind of a local boy. It sounds like we're excited to have him. And uh, David, how you doing? Yeah, hey, I'm great. Thanks very much. How are you, how are you guys doing? Very good, thank you, sir. Nice to have you here. Yep, it's good you, to have you. I say here. <laughs> nice, nice to have you on this uh, on this Discord chat. Uh, great to have you in the virtual space that we're living in. Uh, <laughs> the virtual space that everyone is living in. Yes. Yeah. more man or something. So obviously we, we definitely want to uh, grill you a little bit and, and pick your brain about your, uh, about your comic a little bit later here. But yeah, WandaVision this week, um, boy, that was a lot. <laughs> I think yeah. that pause is entirely necessary with what the, what the uh, if you don't mind my language what the fuck happened in that episode i mean I, i've been i've been cursing up a storm in this episode so i think you're all right i think i want to be the clean image though maybe that's my my stick but um yeah to, to, to that say, seems that seems very uh, non-italian that is very true. yeah you went from the mario effed up time to what the fuck happened in wonder <laughs> 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 so that? so i mean uh, last week obviously you know quick recap last week the big the big reveal is surprise. Everybody Agnes saw. is in fact Agatha Harkness. <laughs> it, it was as they. That song. It was Agatha sorry, after that all. That song has been running around my head the whole time. It was Agatha. It's amazing. Oh, all, all week I've just been coming. It was Agatha. All alone. It's catchy. Man. Apparently, it's based on a, an actual song. I saw a news it headline. Like a monster I, theme tune. A little That's bit. Gonna, yeah, yeah, because it's it's like da 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 da. That, that kind of like yeah yeah, yeah I, I i saw um, um, like Facebook during the week, there was like that song has been used like almost every theme for every different sitcom yeah has had the same like kind of chord progression and it maybe like a slight variation but pretty much all the songs are all based around that same kind of chord progression oh yeah yeah so it's... there you go that's how they were so easily able to to parody a lot of those uh 
a lot of those sitcom introductions with the the first seven episodes is for example episode seven you watch that intro and you go yeah that's the office i recognize it i don't i don't know if the uk office used the same sort of intros the u.s office did but that's definitely what the u.s office theme sounded like i got more malcolm in the middle vibes i'll be honest from the theme tune malcolm in the middle um episode the halloween episode was very malcolm in the middle Oh, it's more Modern Family, actually. Never mind. I'm, I'm, Modern Family is the one that I was thinking is rather than The Office. Sorry. That's what yes. The, the actual episode was very Modern Family. The the theme, the introduction, if you listen to the the theme tune for the US version of The Office and then that introduction, it's very it's very similar. Um, so, so I mean, we, we dive right in. We've got, uh, we've got Wanda in Agatha's creepy witch basement. Um, though before we do any of that, we actually get some some background on Agatha's kind of past, which is interesting. I yeah, you're that thinking was... that she's about to be at the stake, and it's like, no, these are other witches that are had enough of her witchy ways. I thought it was quite an interesting idea to start an episode like that, because obviously it's one of the first episodes where we, we do kind of like a time jump at the very start, if that makes sense. Because all the other ones, it kind of starts right in the middle of the action, whereas this one, it's like, goes to Agatha's origin. As you said, you see her possibly going to be burnt at the stake and just the whole situation shit it's the fan um it kind of reminded me of buffy the vampire slayer like when they would go back to like speaking angels like beginnings or whatnot and then it would cut to present day so it kind of reminded me of that yeah. not to bring joss whedon in it obviously <laughs> <laughs> and the whole the whole start scene just on a total 180 it was you know you thought right okay she's about to get you know um killed here basically i was i was you know half expecting her to be dumped in the water you know like they used to do you know are you a witch are you a witch she's dead don't know, she's yeah, see if she floats dead, does she weigh yeah, more or less than a exactly. duck and then all of a sudden it was just like <laughs> we're actually but she's with everybody here then you know she she obviously flipped it again you're just like what is going on here this is five minutes in already i'm completely hooked right and and they, so don't really, I can be good. I can be good. And they're like, no, you can't. Ah, okay. Like, yeah, I, I love so. I, I love Catherine Hahn's acting in this episode so much because she goes, she she hits that switch so easily in that scene from seeming distressed and helpless to kind of the the villain turn of of the smirk and the like. All right, you got me. Right back to like, no, I can be good. Don't do the thing. Yeah. Back and forward a split second, she's you know she's a good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy, you know, like this side. Which uh, which happens through the whole episode. Which happens mm, yeah. the whole episode. You see that consistently, that whole kind of. Oh yeah. Flip I still and... don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's, you can't you can't properly tell, and I and I, I mean once we obviously discuss the episode maybe at the end of, about theories and stuff, I, I think there could be another Marvel character that could possibly another big bad that might be involved that teased that hasn't. Yeah. Howard, I agree with you, Massimo. Definitely, I think yeah. I think she is just almost a pawn, as if she's working for someone else. And uh, I've got a few theories of who it could be. I don't know if you want me to say anything just now or leave it. Yeah. The let's end. let's go over theories at the end yeah, here. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Leave, leave it theories Because I definitely want to know. I we've got one episode left, allegedly. Um, <laughs> and I, I definitely want to know how everyone thinks they're going to wrap it up in one more episode. So, so we go from the the uh, the flashback to Agatha's origins to back to the creepy basement, and uh, this is pretty much a, a it's so it's funny. This episode doesn't so much uh, parody a sitcom as deliberately as other episodes have, but it does still parody it in a sense that this is kind of a clip show episode. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. We Even kind the title of, of the episode as well. Yeah, the the previously on, I believe, yeah. is the <laughs> right. So we spend the episode kind of exploring Wanda's past, um, which is, is some things that we've we've touched on in in Age of Ultron, uh, but we we really get to kind of see the details here. And I think it's, I think the 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 cruelest thing that Agatha does is it's not just that Wanda has to watch these past events happen she has to participate she is an actor in these she is is going back into the body of her past self see i've got a theory on that i'm not sure that she's being cruel i don't think she's even a villain in this i think she's trying to she's trying to get like whatever power or whatever knowledge wanda has obviously but she i think she's trying to kind of snap her out of it like i think that might be the kind of the the final twist. twist I, I don't think you're wrong, especially given um, Agatha's kind of position in the actual comics as yeah. something of a mentor yeah, for Wanda. Thinking, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, did anyone notice? I'm sure you guys did. I'm probably asking rhetorically, but in that Agatha flashback, uh, when when the the head witch there, who I guess is is supposed to be her mother, um, when yeah. she's kind yes. of getting full witchy power, she gets that little ghostly crown uh, that looks very much. Yep. Yeah, looks looks very much like Wanda's Scarlet Witch crown. Yep. So, so I'm hoping that she's going to become her mentor and teach her how to use ma- more magic, and she's going to get that crazy crimson hat. So sorry, someone what, else is about to speak. From what I can kind of understand, um, is that disembodied had, voice again? Agava, Agava has been uh, dragged in there, and she has spent that time trying to find out if she is basically controlling Westview on purpose, or if it's somebody else. And as far as she can see. Like she's consciously like not doing it, and so therefore the type of magic that she's using is chaos magic. And generally, from what I understand, her powers in the comics, feel like Doctor Strange and whatnot, is that she can she can never fully control her powers. Like she'll never ever be in control. Um, and then that's why she belted out with chaos magic and Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. And I think in terms of what i read the, that kind of witch is a scarlet witch and there's not many of them which means they're like all powerful and they have chaos magic which like can't be controlled so whether it turns out she did it consciously or somebody had subconsciously obviously there's mephisto or whatever that's apparently supposedly in it but then if we've only got one episode are they going to reveal like a huge massive villain in the end or are they going to bring him in the last five minutes because obviously you had paul bethany talking about how there's an actor he's never worked always with, worked with yeah with. i it's was just, uh, it's, just, it's going to be two paul bethany's it's that's going to be what i was isn't it? <laughs> i was going to say that i was going to say that, that that would be the best thing would be he's hyping up this actor he's always wanted to work with and it turns out to be himself which, uh, <laughs> I mean, based on the end of this episode, we know there's going to be two ba- Paul Bettany's. I mean, there's no spoiler. question about that. My uh, credit spoiler. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So the, these flashbacks that we go through, there's there's three three major flashbacks that we kind of work our way through. Um, the first one is is Wanda and Pietro's children with her parents in Sokovia, where it, we sort of learn a little bit about why Wanda is so obsessed with these old sitcoms. Um because it looks like her her father kind of smuggled uh, smuggled sitcoms into the house room to have kind of a family uh, TV night, which is uh, unfortunately very quickly put to a stop by a Stark Industries bomb dropped on their house. I mean, it's a literal bomb dropping. Uh, yes. In, in terms of in terms of uh, story beats, and I was I was going to say obviously uh, uh, our disembodied voice uh, Scottish Sheen. Uh, we're saying that the idea of our powers in the comics is chaos magic. In this episode, and I don't know if I was maybe the one that picked up on it, I'm pretty sure like it displays the two different types of powers that she has in the comics. Yes. Which is, first of all, she's a probability wizard, yep. a probability witch, and then it goes to the idea that she is chaos magic, and because obviously Agatha's like, line is like, oh, you, what I see is a young witch using probability. How long were you underneath her for? Like two days? Snug and safe the whole time? Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, so which yeah. we kind of knew about that. In Age of Ultron, we do get the backstory of, you know, a, a bomb was dropped on their house and they hid under a bed for two days. And um, it, and at that point, it was never, it was just suggested that the bomb was a dud. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that could still be the case. But yes, Agatha infers, you made the bomb not go off with probability bullshit. So maybe she's always been a mutant and it's not been Strucker and Hydra experimentation that's given her is that what we're kind of hinting at here? The, I believe I mean, that is what we're hinting at, though um, Hydra's experimentation definitely played a role in her powers, which we see in the next flashback, which is an older, yeah. uh, more Age of Ultron aged uh, Wanda being experimented on by those Hydra scientists, which in this case, experimentation apparently just means walking into a room and, and looking at the scepter with the Mind Stone in it, I guess. It's a, not exactly the Kobayashi Maru or whatever, right? But, you know, I think it, it definitely had some weird results. I mean, most of, most of the characters in the MCU have gotten their powers via a, a stone or unknowingly a stone. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, it could be that, you know, these guys are mutants and maybe their powers don't awaken when they become teenagers. Maybe they just fade away. And then this power has basically released it once they've came in contact with the stone. That was kind of my understanding. 
I was, yeah. I, I agree with you, and I was going to say as well, we don't actually know specifically in the MCU what the, uh, the Mind Stone does. Like, we, I think through this series, we've actually seen it do the most amount of things. Like, we've seen the Mind Stone change people's mind back in the simulation when Vision goes up to people and we unscrambles their brain. And we've also now found out that it might also, and I think this is my theory, is that whenever those who touch the Mind Stone who have cosmic powers or superhuman abilities, they get to see what their true versions of themselves are. Like, what is the version in your mind that is the best possible version of yourself? Right. Which is why, possibly during that scene, when we see the Scarlet Witch in our classic garb for, like, a split flame frame, that's what that could relate to, is the fact that it's seen within our true self. Right. And bringing her mind to reality. I don't know if that's completely I, off, but... Um, that's as good a theory as any. Be. Which, the, the yeah. Mind Stone kind so of clearing thing- people's heads in Westview is an interesting point, because technically... The Mind Stone is destroyed, so that yeah. kind of infers that this, uh, whatever this version of Vision is, which we'll get to that in a second, um, is using that power without, with like a simulated Mind Stone of some sort or something like that. If the, the Mind Stone was destroyed, wasn't it? it yeah, was destroyed. All, all of the Infinity Stones yeah. were destroyed, which is why they had to do time That's shenanigans. Right, so so if the, the way I see it is like, so the, the, the Vision that Wanda has created is purely that. There's no Mind Stone in, involved in that at all. Um, the vision that has been created by S.W.O.R.D., excuse all the spoilers here, the vision <laughs> created by S.W.O.R.D. Um, doesn't have a Mind Stone, so it's purely just tech that's behind it. Mm-hmm. They, they are powering it from Wanda. Now, Wanda, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going by the comics here as a, as a mutant, but she could easily have a power enhanced by the, by the stone. Um, but, I mean... You, the, the MCU has is about to it's got to introduce the X Men and the mutants very soon. I'm a huge X Men, and I think someone else is, is, is pulling the strings on all of this. And I think it's going to be I'm hoping X Men really. Mister mm. Sinister. Or I, like that. Do you want me to tell you who I think is it? That's it, that's it, Mister Sinister. You hit the nail right in the head. I oh, think yeah. Mister Sinister is behind the whole thing. I'm just throwing it out there. That's what I think. Mister well, Sinister all the way. That's the first I've ever heard that one. <laughs> I could be right off the mark. I just don't, because obviously um, the Scarlet Witch had a huge, um, you know, she was. What did she do in the MCU? She she basically wiped more than half the mutant population off the earth. And then was yeah, it House of M? Two hundred. Uh, it was uh, no more mutants. And then we had House of M. And when they came back, there was it was like less than a couple of hundred mutants or something. So yeah, I she, there was like a hundred and thirty odd. I think. She, yeah, she does something crazy now. Mm-hmm. I don't think that she will do the opposite, obviously, because I think that they're, if they're smart in the MCU, they'll they'll not make just mutants just appear. All of a sudden, there's mutants going on. I don't think that they may do, I suppose, but I think they're, they're always going to be in the, in the kind of underground, and it's, you know, you exact same as what they did with likes of um, Hank Pym and uh, even Captain America, where they, they went flashbacks to win you know, World War II and all that kind of stuff. I think you'll, you'll eventually see... The same idea only with, with mutant, and I think Mister Sinister has got something something to do with it. That's that's my theory anyway. And, and again, listen, I'm a big X Men fan, so I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> I, I think it's I think More it's a, a a good theory. I mean, I think um, we have a five year gap between Infinity War and Endgame, where we don't really know what happened in that five years, aside from Captain America grew a beard and. Black Widow got sad, but we don't we don't really know what else happened during that five years. For all we know, you know, Charles Xavier founded a school, or babies were, you know, Mister Sinister started doing some shit. Yeah. So there's a there's a whole time gap in there, and I mean, with the way that they've built up the MCU and with how much attention they've paid to details, there's no way that they don't have that in the back of their heads that they've got that five years to play with. Yeah, they'll have the foundation for all that. So we mentioned that in the, the kind of test of our podcast that obviously no one has heard, uh, that in one of the early episodes, the, the director of Sword, what was his name? Hayward. T- Tyler Howard. Hayward, yes. yes. He says like they lost a, a team of astronauts and they still haven't heard from them during right. the blip. So, mm. Fantastic Four, right? Like, right. Is that Richards so and, and Sue and... That's. Yeah. I think that's kind of the prevailing theory with that. I think that this show will, uh, and I believe we mentioned it earlier on, is that this will bust uh, the whole MCU right open. Uh, this this will be the point of like I, I wouldn't say no return, but the point of where we can allow some of the more 
crazy and outlandish aspects of the comics to maybe be integrated into the MCU. Um, because obviously it's a massive gamble bringing mutants in. Because mm. it, that's, I mean, one of the main reasons for House of M, which is an event of the comics where Wanda says no more mutants, was because of the idea that the X-Men were getting too bloated. So whenever they, whenever they decide to bring the X-Men, hopefully, as I'm in the same opinion as, as David, where I really, really, fingers crossed, um, whenever they do decide to do that, it'll be interesting to see if you can choose right. from, you know, like 60 years of comics. Right. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be some real shit if they bring the X-Men in and they hold off on Wolverine? They yeah, just do like the original somewhat. X-Men team. Mm-hmm. Like, like that I, kind of thing. I, I, kind of think, I kind of think that's what they should do. I think they should just go for the yeah. original X-Men team. You know, I agree. Staff it that way and then have, you know, you can easily bring, you can bring Wolverine in whenever. He'll be another one that'll be back in World War Two, you know, and, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I think I think that is, I think that's what, I was really looking forward to seeing the X-Men come to life for the first kind of Fox movie. I was so annoyed at how much they butchered. I was just like, oh, you know, where's, Where's the proper Ice Man? Where's Where's Angel? All this. It just It, it just It was It was good to see them all come to life, but it It, it, it wasn't. It didn't pay homage. I don't think. No. The, the stuff, I think the whole line after that, the, all every movie after that, just tried to kind of play catch up with them. You know, doing what the MCU did. I think the MCU have by far done it far better. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm, I mean, they they if really set the standard. The, yeah, hundred percent. If you go with the original five, though, you can then like. You can have like Krakoa, where you bring in like Warpath and, and all these other guys, like all oh, really good stories. Whereas if you go, I oh, will take you know Archangel, it's like well that didn't make any sense. Or it will bring in you know Wolverine and Rogue yeah. and you know Colossus. It's like well, you're kind of like you're missing out on a whole bunch of really great stories that you could have. So I I, I trust Marvel will do it the right way and we'll get like a progression. I think Marvel is the right way. I mean, Gambit was one of my favourite characters, and still is one of my favourite characters of all time. So I'm dying to see a, a Gambit movie. Uh, I mean, uh, who was supposed to be playing him again? Channing Tatum. Who was the Taylor, actor that was Channing Tatum. Yes. That was him. I was like, Channing Tatum. Take you on. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, just, just no. <laughs> just, just no, Channing. <laughs> oh, his name was Peter. You're not going to you know, ruin Gambit. <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'd really love to see that they will never do? And it's only because of rights and, and the fact that I think... I, I don't know how much more they're going to do with the Mark Ruffalo Hulk character. Um, now that they've kind of, you know, made him the intelligent Hulk. And he's kind of like half Bruce, half Hulk. But if they did do a standalone Hulk movie, if they got those rights back... Because the reason they haven't done that is those rights are still technically tied up with uh, Universal, I think. Um, Universal. Yeah. For a standalone Hulk movie. What you do is you do a standalone Hulk movie, you bring Wolverine in on that, just like they introduced yes. him in the comics. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> back to the original there, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I actually read something recently that the, um, the, the Marvel, the, the rights have reverted back to Marvel for the Hulk. Is that not the case? They have, no, uh, they have, aye, because it was, um, it was him and Namor were with uh, Universal, uh, and the reason they could they could put out a solo movie, but then it means they would need to share the univer- uh, the, the, the distributing rights to Universal, which they were not interested in, because generally it is quite hard to do a Hulk movie, but with Spider-Man, they know it works with Spider-Man, hence why mm. they were obviously working to do it with Sony, but with Universal, it was basically like, no, nah, we're just going to wait until it reverts, and then it reverted january last year obviously it wasn't really big news because and stuff but yes him and namor because namor's been an issue for years hence why they've never ever hinted but he finally came back to them i don't know why because they've never attempted to bring out a namor movie or tv show or cartoon they've had it for like 20 years but see how they're they're potentially bringing in chris evans again as captain america i think they should just do an invaders um show and then you could have uh, Namor, you could have the original Human Torch, okay. body yeah. that gets used for the vision, blah, 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 tie it in there. That'd be pretty good. Um, yeah, I'd love that. Let's, let's wrap this back around really quick to, to kind of finish up with WandaVision. So our, our, third, our third flashback is maybe the most telling. We were told that, um, that Wanda broke into S.W.O.R.D. and stole Vision's body, and we were kind of led to believe that that was the vision we've been following throughout this series. It turns out, no, she is led into S.W.O.R.D. and allowed to see Vision's body, which that is... I've never been so disturbed by a dismembered robot before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a shockingly yeah. tough scene. 
I, especially the, yeah. the, the words as well of I can't feel you. I mm. I was like that was legitimately hard to watch, and it, uh, it it can't be said enough. Credit to Elizabeth Olsen for her acting in this show. She has just been tremendous. Um, I, I mean, she has, she's definitely been good. I mean, all all the different you know the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, the eighties and nineties, whatever. All the all the different um, TV shows that she's been doing, she, she went through the whole uh, series. She's been great. I think she's yeah, um, her, I'm yeah, very impressed with her. Her range has been just shocking. Yeah, do you know what's interesting about that scene? And uh, I feel like it's kind of news as well. Is that the the book uh, the, the the panel which that is based off? Uh, which is in West Coast Avengers issues of those that comic book specifically those kind of it's like I think issues forty five uh, like forty to forty seven are now skyrocketing in price on eBay because of uh, because of all the this all the, obviously the latest episode of Wonder Mission but um, issue fifty two is the one where Vision comes back in with a white body and I think someone just paid fifteen hundred dollars oh, for like yeah. a nine point CGC one well, and the folk who like were reporting on it were going no this is not Fifteen hundred dollar book. That's insane. Like, just don't well, pay crazy money like that for it. Well, we understand um, yeah, cool. why that's going for a little bit more cash. Um, because we we get this flashback, we see that Wanda. We find out that that Vision had actually purchased a property in Westview, New Jersey, for them to, as his very heartfelt note says, grow old in. And Wanda just kind of has a complete mental breakdown there. In what yeah, I think is, tough. yeah, in, in what I think is a very obvious parallel to House of M and Avengers disassembled to a certain extent, and creates that whole bubble, and that's where we kind of see her create that fake world. Obviously, not not really of her own volition. Like it, it's just she finally kind of loses it after having lost that many people, and 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 there's where we see how this vision was created. Is is literally she creates a copy of a vision out of her mind. And what's interesting about that is all the rest of her magic is red. As that vision is being created, the the magic, you know, hoodoo that's creating him is yellow. It, it's a different color. It's a mind stone yellow. I totally missed that. Mm-hmm. I missed yellow that completely. So is that, does she, is there like a part of vision like imprinted in her? Or, you know, what's what's happening there is I think the, the big question. Um the previous flashback to when she was a teenager in the Hydra base and whatnot, and it's the, the Mind Stone and whatnot there, so is that like tying in those two flashbacks together? Is that where, maybe like, when, she, when she touched the stone there with her mind, is this somehow transferred over at this point? Like, the grief or whatever has just brought out the, the magic in her or something? I don't know. It's I possible. totally missed that yellow... Yellow yeah, magic it's, thing it's, it's, I, I actually noticed the yellow magic, but I, I, I'm actually colorblind, so I didn't connect the two of them together. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're saying that, I'm just like, oh, wait a minute. That, that's new information, dude. Hold on. Right. <laughs> It, it's oh, it's a very it's a small thing, but I I noticed you know the the color of magic has definitely been a factor mm-hmm. in in the series. Wanda's red, yeah. Agatha's purple. Purple. So I think. Or blue if you're me. Right, right. <laughs> that's awesome. It's a it's a general. It is a color that's not red. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's on the colder side of the spectrum. So yeah, we we get blue. that we we see that flashback and then. You know, we, we get the kind of the mic drop moment where Agatha accuses Wanda of using chaos magic and kind of brands her with the name Scarlet Witch, which was great. And then we just get that, that post credit scene where we finally get the reveal of White Vision, um, which Massimo kind of mentioned the significance of that in the West Coast Avengers. Um, I, th- I think it's going to be Ultron. I th- yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be. It could be. That's an interesting... It's an interesting idea. So you think that that Ultron is going to be kind of the the think, AI in that version of Vision? Uh, yeah, I think the idea is that the idea of like Ultron never being destroyed, right? Had destroyed, which which comes up in Age of Ultron. Huh. I feel like if that was to now pay off all these years later, it would be phenomenal. Yeah. From Marvel, especially um, considering Age of Ultron, I feel like it's kind of the forgotten Avengers movie. Like, not that many people love it. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like only time will tell. And we will find out next week. We will indeed. We've got one more episode to somehow wrap this all up. So we've got Dave's yeah. theory with uh, Mr. Sinister being involved. We've got, you know, your typical theories of Mephisto or Nightmare or, or, you know, something like that. 
really I quick. Really, really love it if it's uh, Bruce Campbell comes in as Ralph, her husband, <laughs> and it's Mephisto, like, and it's just Bruce Campbell being the devil. That, I... that will be. I, I would do love anything that. at this point, and I'll be like. <laughs> but if, if it's Bruce Campbell as Mephisto, I think I just need to stop watching TV, reading comics, and everything else. It's done. Like they've just they've, they've they can't beat it. It's it's the pinnacle. Yeah, and, and then they, they can tie it back to the to the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies, and he was Mephisto the whole time there as well. And then it turns out that oh, they bring so Tobey Maguire true. into No Way Home, and they did One More Day in the in the Tobey Maguire universe. Oh, and... It would it would be incredible. It's to a Spider Ham solo film. Like a Roger Rabbit style Spider Ham solo movie, and possibly you know the Pet Avengers or something. Like it's just it can just go so many ways now. They can pretty much do whatever. So really quick before we move on to our main attraction here, does anyone else have any other major theories of what's going to happen next week? I think yeah, yeah, White Vision and, and Regular Vision are going to join and become their Vision. <laughs> yeah, so he's going to get out of. He's going to get back into the. MCU. Um, I, I think that's pretty likely. What it'll be, you know. Um, my only thing that I would say is back to my theory I mentioned earlier is I feel like they're going to manifest the uh, Mind Stone again, and then that could also break reality in a way because I feel like there's going to be some reality breaking event at the end of the series, um, which we don't know yeah. what that is. But I feel which like um, yeah, which a remanifestation of these stones that aren't supposed to exist in this timeline that just absolutely totally blows open. Yeah, well, you and know. You said if- an echo about- Sorry, just one quick thing. When you said a minute ago about Ultron coming back in, I thought that's a really great idea because you just say he can't be killed and whatnot, he will always come back and like haunt them. They keep killing off villains, do you know what I mean? Like, so they need to you know, have a roster of villains that they can bring back in and stuff like that. Just too many crossbones. Uh, Loki's not dead, but uh, I think who else? Red Skull, like, all these great villains that they just like, yeah. Killmonger, all these guys just kill off, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. like where's the raft? Do you know what I mean? Like, where, where are all these guys being like breaking out of and causing chaos down the line? Which I, they definitely need to get some more like stable villains to uh, come no, back. There's no, uh, there's no Arkham Asylum in the MCU. Yeah, it's, they've got uh, the raft. I they, mean, they they could. They, they did establish the raft in uh, Winter's no Civil War, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They did actually. They just filmed it full of heroes instead of villains. Right. So they they could play with that a little bit. See, yeah, that was full of all good guys. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I really hope that they do. So I mean, that's that's. I guess we'll see next week where where that goes and and how they're gonna wrap this all up. And then I'm sure after that we're gonna dive straight into Winter Soldier and Falcon, and we'll be having these same kind of conversations about that. I don't think it's going to be as good. Like I'm looking forward to it, but it's going to need to go some to beat this because this is phenomenal tv absolutely i think it's going to be a i think it's going to be a completely different type of show though. yeah well, yeah because i think it's just going to be kind of action-packed from start to finish it's just going to be lots of fight scenes lots of crazy stunts uh, and it's, it's just literally going to be you know that lots of testosterone basically <laughs> agreed Whereas one division has totally changed the whole kind of um, the whole idea of what you can do in the mcu so that's that's exciting it's it, it's given it a different type of storyline a different you know a different type of way to kind of to write something which is, is exciting just tying into what i was saying a second ago about not having like a stable roster of villains i think i'm pretty sure i've heard that they're bringing in sin which is the red skull's daughter in the uh, falcon and the winter soldier if wanda and the, the avengers like from endgame have messed up reality and whatnot could this be the red skull's return as well like are they gonna just like have they noticed that shit we don't have like the big guns, the big guns, the big guys, like they're, they're kind of disappearing on us through the earlier films. Could they bring in the Red Skull through Falcon and Winter Soldier? Like, is that going to be a thing? It's just sorry, I just got pure excited when I was thinking, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess we'll see. We'll we'll find out in uh, in about a month here. So. I want to kind of co- move on to the reason that we have Dave on today, which is to kind of. Uh, talk about and, 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 and ask some questions he's, about like, his project that he's got going um, and uh, kind of pick his brain a bit and, and find out more about that. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm going to kind of actually let, uh, let Massimo kind of lead the questions here. Cool. I know cool. Massimo's got a little bit of a, of a journalistic background with his schooling, so I think he might be a little bit more suited for this than I am. 
Uh, I mean, you could you could say that, but you could also say that I am incredibly nervous. Uh, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, David. Uh, but I am. I, look, I, no, I just it just uh, it isn't every day you get to interview someone who has been able to kickstart their own comic. Uh, and speaking of kickstarting your own comic, how did you oh, find the experience? That was, that, was, um, that was a nice week. I think we found my replacement. Nice week end. Like, that was very good. Um, <laughs> how, did you, how did you how did you find using a, a comic? Uh, for Kickstarter, and also to tie in with that as well, with your overall experience, could you maybe explain to the listener what your uh, kind of comic series Glass City is going to be all about? Yeah, so, uh, well, Glass City, the, the story of a missing girl, volume uh, one, is um, basically it follows a detective. Um, it's, it's set um, 100 years in the future, uh, and it's based off of Glasgow, funnily enough, um, and it's, um, it's a dark gritty kind of crime series basically about a detective whose daughter went missing kind of five years previous and um, he's had no clues as to finding what's happened to her um, and as he stumbles he, 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 he takes on a case um, that kind of mirrors his own case and as he delves deeper in that, this case he starts to uncover and starts to find out uh, what's happened um, the, he thinks that the, the city is already dark but it's about to get kind of Darker and a little bit funnily enough. <laughs> Ooh, what what a sell! I feel like that is that is. Oh, I'm excited already. It's definitely um, it's definitely going to change. I think issue two or volume two. Sorry, is um, my uh, uh, Ryan the letter uh, from California. He's he's great. He comes back and, and speaks to me all the time. Roman the artist. He's he's quite quiet to be honest. You know, you send I send Roman a big long text message and I just get back a thumbs up and it's like okay. Thanks. Yeah, it sounds just, like an artist to me. This, <laughs> and then he just reduces this fantastic piece of art and you're like okay, if that's where you want to go, I'm happy with that. Whereas Ryan is, you know, we get a conversation with Ryan, so he's read the script for the uh, second volume when you come back with it. absolutely amazing. It goes completely bonkers at the end. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well. I love the idea that you're even surprised at what your own book is going to be like. Like I love. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the images on the Kickstarter here, and I I I do really love this art style. Roman is excellent. I was gonna. He's really, ask, really good. I was gonna ask this as well. Um, not I don't want to take all the good questions, uh, but. In terms of the the art style, that um uh, is the the guy is it Roman uh, Gubski? Is that his name? Gubski. That's yeah, that's what I mean. Um, he it looks like uh, he is like his influence uh, of art seems to be very 2018. If that you know that kind of that kind of those books and maybe Sin City, is that maybe influence your writing as well and like the way how I mean you know I mean when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> 2000 AD right there. I'm a, I'm a massive 2000 AD band, uh, fan, so I think when I'm uh, describing the panels and everything to Roman, there's a lot of, there's a big influence in that. Um, and again, Sin City as well, actually, if I open this cupboard here, I'm pretty sure if I just reach in there, I'll get it plenty in there. Uh-oh, I've just, uh, <laughs> yeah, so here's a, a Sin City. Nice. Right. I mean, they are a... Uh, <laughs> they are uh, huge influences. What I write and, and what I do. You hit the nail right in the head. I put basically uh, Glass City is based upon um, Mega City One, uh, Sin City, Gotham City, and of course Glasgow. So that's kind of what the four the four main cities that uh, Glass City. Those sound uh, like uh, three Romans cities. Just... Those sound like three cities I'm I'm familiar with and fans of, and a fourth city that I know nothing about. And I'll, I'll leave it to you <laughs> to guess which one's which. <laughs> You've never been to Gotham. <laughs> you nailed it nailed it I haven't heard good things um, though if, if you can imagine walking through Gotham that's pretty much where Glasgow's fair um, enough yeah it is it is very gothic <laughs> the art style um and, and, and honestly the art style is gothic I think yeah. quite also no sorry no you, you go sorry my bad it's sorry I was, I was saying uh, uh, I'll always say that alright first Dave and then Massimo <laughs> yeah I've lost what I was going to say. I think I've got a delay maybe what's happening. I think that's what's happening. Sorry, Massimo, on you go. Go for it. All I was just going to say was uh, on the idea of the gothic art style uh, of kind of uh, Roman decided to go with your book. And obviously your story is very gothic as well, especially with the plot line of a missing uh, child and stuff like that. Um, in terms of outside of comic, uh, does it tend to do, uh, did the influences come from like noir films or kind of that kind of genre, like crime, or is it just like something entirely... Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure. I think, you know, just general um, walking through Glasgow. I think when I, I started 
uh, right? Uh, I'd done a reboot of um, Taggart. And so I think nice. when I've done that, I, I really, really enjoyed doing that. And I think so when I started writing this one, I took a lot of experience from that. Uh, I thought I really, really enjoyed writing a kind of detective uh, storyline. So I think that's where it's come from. I mean, who doesn't love a good a, a, a good crime detective when all things are about to kick off and go? Yeah, those are always so fun. I think, that's kind of it's come from. I, I, think, I think detective stories make a very good template for the kind of uh, the kind of hero's journey. Where you've got your, you know, mm-hmm. your call to adventure, the initial, you know, ignoring the call and eventually giving into it, and and you know, going from here's your normal life to oh no, everything's gone insane. Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the old anti-hero. If the guy's I love an anti, that's that's what it's all about. It's the person you don't think is going to do all of a sudden. Those the are... drinking, smoking anti was a scumbag. <laughs> you know, those those are some of I, I find in in a lot of fiction. Those are the characters that resonate with people for whatever reason. Like no one, I mean, some people do, but like no no one really gives a shit about Luke Skywalker. Everyone's there for Han Solo. Yeah, totally. The lovable rogue. I love Han Solo. He's a hero. I mean, yeah. So that's um, as far as as far as the experience that you've had with with getting this project off the ground. You know what's what is it has it been like actually kind of kickstarting a project like that and kind of what challenges have you run into along the way here you know what it has been the biggest learning experience i think i've ever had apart from having a, a child that's <laughs> <Good save. laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the, the whole thing has just been a uh, it's been a real big learning experience i mean i wasn't too sure about doing a kickstarter i went to i don't know maybe alan or massimo have you guys heard of the scottish cartoon society uh, yeah i've heard of it i think ian uh, other ian ian bonner he uh, has had some dealings with him but he's told me about right. that's about all really mm-hmm. right so one day it must have been 2018 uh, I, I, I know I'm sitting back and scouting the the, uh, Facebook to figure out how. But the, the, yes, there were four times before the good things, and then um, uh, I stumbled across this cartoon society, and I'd seen that they met in a pub in Glasgow. So I thought, I'm going to go up. Everybody's welcome. Pub Glasgow cartoon the guys in the comic books. What's what can possibly go wrong? Everything can possibly go right. And they basically <laughs> said to me, "Have you tried? Have you tried looking at Kickstarter? Have you tried doing it that way?" And I was like, you know, asking my friends, it's a bit, a bit dodgy, you know. But when I checked it out, Kickstarter for comics is insanely huge, massive. Oh, yeah. And, and so, oh, I mean, it's in 2020, I think, uh, was kind of the icing, or the cherry on the cake, sorry. So once I started looking properly into it, and, you know, like, say, Kiltopia, for example, a few different guys from Scotland in general, and all over, all over Britain. And I was just, I'm going to do this. And then I had planned to do it in the April 20th. You know, pandemic struck in March. I kind of held off for a wee bit. And then June came and I just saw this. I'm just going to do it now. And just, yeah, I think everybody was stuck at home and their wages. <laughs> I'm going to buy some comics. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to be so lucky next time around, <laughs> to be honest. I don't think we get anything to worry about, man. Like, I read it, like two or three times over the last day or two and absolutely loved it, man. Like, absolutely loved it. So I think I can't wait for, like, parts two and three. When are they getting awesome. <laughs> Well, I mean, part two is, uh, so Roman has it, Ryan has it. Um, I've had character uh, sketches back from Roman. Um, they're looking awesome. Uh, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to start, you know, production, if you like, pretty soon. Um, and I'm hoping to kind of, I've started building the Kickstarter already. So I'm hoping to kind of launch, I'm thinking summertime, I don't know when yet, yeah, okay. sometime the in the summer. Good show. Sorry, I, I missed that, sorry. I'm just thinking good show, like I, I'm, All right. I'm excited for, for what comes next. The, uh, my, my, Massimo, uh, you've, you've got the questions. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you just throw them under the bus there. No, um, I, I, I was going to say, yeah, I, I will obviously congratulate you as well, because it is a phenomenal achievement to be able to get something like that off the ground. Um, and, and and specifically within the kind of the Glasgow uh, or kind of Scottish comics, have you seen anything or anyone who you maybe like to work with in the future? And even out with that as well, maybe with kind of international arts and stuff. But is there are you maybe planning on maybe taking the next few volumes of comic to be more homegrown, or are you going to stick with the same team artist? Um, well, you know what, I'm I'm open to kind of um, to all ideas. To be honest, I'm not I'm not really, I'm not precious with um, who I work with. I, I think you know <laughs> myself, Roman and Ryan. We have now done what we've done with that first book, and obviously I want Roman and Ryan to stay on for the, for the three issues, uh, three volumes. Um, but you know, I do. I submitted a, a kind of four-page comic to the seventy-seven 
Um, I've not heard anything back right enough, but you know, if they were to, I wouldn't. I mean, if they were to pair me up with an artist, then uh, yeah, I'd be happy to go with them. But I would definitely, uh, I would definitely work with a little, definitely. Next. Any particular artists are expensive. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. imagine. You know, see that that's that's the big issue. It's like you know, being the writer, you, you know, you're you're the one that's going to have to do all the legwork and, and get all the funding and stuff. You know, the dearer the artist, the harder it is to get it all properly funded. So, uh, well, I've got a nice kind of thing going with Roman and Ryan. I don't want to rock the boat with that. But <laughs> who knows? I mean, we'll see what happens in the future. You know, I mean, fingers crossed. I'll work with you guys. Will draw a couple of men. <laughs> well, what's um. <laughs> I mean, as as far as as far as Glass City goes, what's what's the overall response been like so far? It's been really, really good. I've been pretty pretty surprised, to be honest. Uh, I yell, uh, everyone just again. I'm almost wanting someone to tell me how shite it is, <laughs> <laughs> so I can go, okay, that's good, you know, because everyone's just saying it's it's really, really good. And I'm just, just saying that because either you're my friend or you can me or you know that. You just know, saying it because you're here. My review is yeah, absolutely yeah, savage. Exactly. <laughs> Like, <laughs> as soon as I turn off the camera, he's gonna be like, "Was fucking mince by the way." That's <laughs> kind of, <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of the. So, so um, the isn't that kind of the the curse of of being any sort of creative person though is you're always going to kind of you're going to have that little voice in the back of your head being like, mm, "But is what I'm making kind of crap though?" <laughs> well, you know what? I, I spoke to uh, um, a, uh, a woman that used to um, she used to drink in the pub. I used to I used to work in, and she's just released on last year, the year before, she uh, released a kids book. And um, she's like, oh, David, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations to your comic. I, you know, I went to buy a copy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, right, okay. She's an English teacher as well. Oh, no. <laughs> right, okay, well, you know, exactly. And um, I says, you know, you know, I think there's a few things I could do better. You know, the, this, that, you know, I, I, looking back on it, I should have maybe not done this and maybe said this or maybe not wrote that and maybe I wrote, wrote this. And uh, she's like, David, that's just you being yourself. Don't worry about it in the slightest. I look back on the kids' book that uh, I wrote, and she's like, "There's lots of things that would you notice things more than it." <laughs> so, yeah, I think you're right. I think I will probably pick up a lot more negatives on it than everyone else. But I guess that's part of what it is of being a creator. It's it's, it's part and parcel. I've I've dabbled. I've never actually produced anything that's come out like you have, but I, I've I've dabbled over the many years with writing, and yeah, no, I've. Every time I've ever written anything, there's there's that voice in the back of your head going, yeah, but like, what if I could do this better? So yeah, I, th- I think that's just part of the the curse of of creating anything. I would yeah uh, yeah you're, de- you're, you're definitely. I would I just like to also add as well, just like from creative aspect, um, for any kind of other future writers, anyone else who wants to maybe go into that kind of field, what would you maybe be your advice for? Them? Just do it. You know, my my big uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Just just keep doing it, and, and don't be don't be shy to let folk read it. Out. Either just you know, David Nicky to paper and just race. David Crana says, <laughs> "Just do it." <laughs> David Nicky I mean, that sounds like that's kind of the the uh, realization you had to come through with your Kickstarter that you were talking about. Is you know, it sounds like you were kind of uh, kind of stuck on on when was the right time to pull that trigger, and at some point you just had to go, "Fuck it." That that's exactly. It. I mean, I was I was I put up a wee post saying, look, I know I was, you know, for months I was doing coming soon, coming soon to Kickstarter, coming soon. So much so that uh, my brothers and pals would every time I said anything in a group chat, I was just like, oh, next text, coming soon, you know. And then, <laughs> then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden the, uh, the pandemic hit, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to stall this a little bit. No, um, it's the then, perfect yeah, exactly, time. So like, Fuck it, I'm just going to do this. What's the the so, inside cover well, of your? I think there's never a perfect. Go for it, go for it, man. <laughs> so I, say is, I don't think there's ever a perfect time. I think it's just a case of just get it done and just do it. Yeah, that's it. I think that's great advice for anyone that's that's looking to do any sort of uh, creative endeavor. Well, the, the inside cover of the book, yeah. the very first words that you read in it are uh, "Don't leave your dreams in your head," and I was like, "Yeah, man, nice." Like you're just gonna put it right out there for everybody to see. So that really sounds inspirational. Like the that's exclusive. That that page is exclusive to the Kickstarter uh, uh, people. So the for anyone who never anyone who buys a book from now on, that page isn't in it. Ha, uh, so. It's a it's on, it's now a, a credit page. <laughs> so there you go. I love there you that. go. It's it's a little uh, little exclusive right there. Um, it's a little exclusive. Not to, not to get obviously too far off track you know, with the actual book itself, but like for example, in an ideal world, right, if you were able to have like a movie adaptation 
of Glass City or TV show adaptation. I don't know, like, <laughs> like that one of those things of like one of these ideal situations where your book, you know, your book's already very popular in the and they've probably seen up all that. What would you like? Who would you want to maybe be like your your like the person who plays your main characters, or do you have anyone in mind, or do you have like a soundtrack that you maybe play? Like, what like if you could have this in an ideal world? God, <laughs> you really put them on the spot. What what a what... <laughs> I know what a question. Uh, who could who could play the character? I've got no idea. Uh, you? <laughs> oh, no, no. You can play the character. They sign me up. I can get out of it. <laughs> um, as, far, <laughs> as far as the soundtrack is concerned, I think you know. Ideally, I would like to go um, someday. Some someone new and not known. If you have to do it, do it that way. I said, oh, someone just give the movie and go right up to you, lads. Well, I started learning how to play the guitar uh, over the last little couple of months, so um, I'm available. You're high, you're in now. Cheap. <laughs> um, no, I just. It's not that cool. I think you know, getting someone that's uh, that's new would 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 be uh, ideal. Someone rough, rough. Nice. Um, I'm rough as hell on the guitar, so I think I'm your man. Like, I'm terrible at music. Let's do this. <laughs> we don't want to. We, we don't want to keep you too long with other day. So, like, I think maybe like uh, one of the kind of the, one of the questions that I and Alan uh, kind of suggested, uh, like, if you could write on any uh, character for any character, any property, what would you? Who would you write for? Like in comics or otherwise, like in general, like, who would you want to write for? As as in, what publisher would they want to look right for, or who, what character would they? A character, maybe specific character. A character would choose. Or if you want, uh, either one. Hmm. Well, there's, a, there's, a, who, who, I mean, there's so many. I've thought about this a few times, actually. Do you know what? I'm going to say two, right? I don't know why I'm going to say two. I'm going to say, I'm going to say one. I'll give you a reason for both, right? So I've done one for, uh, I've rebooted, or I've done a semi-reboot for Tiger. So I would love to do a comic book of Tiger, right? Um, would read the hell out of that. Just uh, I've kind of the one I've, one I've got for Tiger Eyes. I've kind of changed and I've kind of mixed him up to, to to someone else to suit Glass City a little bit more. So he's that hopefully in the next couple of years, if all goes well, there'll be a a, a character that's um, based off of, of Jim Tiger, but not that actually. And the other character now, this is going to sound strange, I think. The Cyclops. Huh. Ooh. Next Scott Summers. Aye. Yeah. I think, you know, I think I was so disappointed in the way that he was, um, thingied, the way he was thingied in the, in the X-Men movies, portrayed in the X-Men movies. I thought, you know, you've got such a fantastic character there and he's just a, a wet blanket in the very well. I was so disappointed. You could make him so, you know, he's, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, Dark bastard with the side of Scott Summer. And I think he could Yeah, over really the years because he's got like darker and darker. Yeah. Probably oh, culminating with Avengers or with uh was it was it Avengers versus X Men when he killed Professor X? Yep, he yeah, Cyclops. Yeah. Um, that was a great one. Was I, I would uh, I would definitely say um Actually, you know, on on the subject of Cyclops, have you been reading anything? We obviously done our whole spiel at the start uh, when we talked about what we've been reading this week. Have you been reading anything yourself? So recently, uh, I re as like I said, I showed this earlier on. So I resubscribed to two thousand AD. Uh, um, it's absolutely brilliant, actually. I've just been in the past month. I've been getting back into them. Uh, this one came through the door just the other day. It's a kind of kids version, and it's got um, Cadet Cadet Dread, which is before he's a judge. Huh. I really enjoyed this. It's really really good. There's a uh, Four or five stories in there, I think, um, and they're all they're all fantastic. The other thing I got now, this is one of the uh, one of the first ever Kickstarter books I back. I get absolutely stung on the uh, postage package. This came from oh, the no. states, totally stung me, man. If I'd known this at the time, I wouldn't have got it because it cost me twenty quid postage package. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, I didn't argue with them. I just, you know, said, okay, sod it. They've been waiting <laughs> on it for so long. But it's fantastic. It's a uh, really, really good Osaka mine. It's based in uh, Osaka, funnily enough, which actually appears in Glass City Comics, which is strange. Or this yes. thing, which is strange. Um, and they live in a kind of world that's uh, got goblins. It's quite like what was that film with? Uh, it was on Netflix with Will Smith. Bright. Oh, bright. Yes. Bright. Yes. So it's a, a similar idea to that. It's uh, based in Japan. Uh, you know, there's goblins walking about and trolls and blah blah blah. And a mime is basically someone who can transform into anyone at all and it's two detectives and you try to get that and it's a single issue standalone uh, I, I really enjoyed that so I would recommend both. I, I'll check I would it. recommend you pay like 20 quid party <laughs> both, uh, both enough, but, uh, and if not sign back up to 2000 well uh, I think I think we've run out of questions uh, I'll be, no, uh, yeah uh, I, yeah I think, I think 
we've uh, we've covered all of the stuff that we wanted to cover. Um, well, real we, uh, re- real quick here, you know, before we before we kind of wrap this up, you know, is there is there anything else that you want to uh, to plug that you're working on, Dave, or or is uh, Glass City kind of your your main squeeze right now? Glass City is kind of uh, my main squeeze right now. Um, you can get the second print is available on buysmallpress.com or comichouse.com. Um, so you can get it straight through them if you want. Uh, or if you want to contact me direct, you can find me on Glass City Comics, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Comics Glass City. If you, if you Google all my fans, stuff, you'll find me. <laughs> well, I, I know um, that... Uh... We certainly appreciate you coming on and, and letting us pick your brain and, and sort of uh, geeking out about WandaVision with us. Um, Thank you, sir. Yes. And, and I, think, I, think, uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say we all are definitely looking forward to uh, the, the continuation of Glass City and, and seeing where things go. And we definitely, definitely. yeah, we, we definitely wish uh, that project and, and the continuing success of your Kickstarter and, and you all the best. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, been a, it's been great being on. I really appreciate you on. And if you ever want me to come back and geek out about One Division or a, a, what do you call it, Falcon Winter Soldier or any other comic book related things, you know what I mean. You're have. available. We we <laughs> might have to take yeah, you up on that for the One Division yeah, finale. Yeah, I would say for the One Division finale, we might have to have you back on. Yeah, <laughs> especially if Mister Sinister turns out to be the guy behind it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm oh yeah, well, full credit to you. Full credit. <laughs> Um, with that if, said, if is, I'll, I'll be very surprised. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I, was, I said, if that is the case with Mr. Sinister, I'll be very surprised. But, uh, yes, I'll be also very surprised. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a good surprise. <laughs> with that, with that all said, uh, I think we're going to, going to bring this podcast to a close. We're at about the hour and a half mark at this point, And, uh, we want to thank everyone who's listened, uh, everyone who, has visited the website. Uh, you can find us on www.bigglasgowcomicpage.com where we have news stories, reviews. I'm sure, at some point, a podcast will be posted up there. And uh, with that said, we hope you all have a, a great rest of your day and join us next week. Bye. 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 Cheers. Thank you.